here in Nepal. Well, it's getting awfully chilly here in Nepal, much like it is in the studio right now. But hey, hailing from the north myself, this is totally fine. And here we are in Village, and this is what I was talking about. A lot of teams do run the triple tank, and so it's going to be Graceful Pag in Zapri is going over to the Roadhog as Spirit picks up, of course, the Reaper. And I think Legion knew this was coming. They're coming in with Blasé on the Junkrat, so if the Grizzlies just try and throw all their bodies onto the point right now, what's going to happen? You're going to have the spam come in from Blasé, and in fact, the Grizzlies right now are very much stuck to the side. They're weighing the heal up and move in, and maybe they want the hook to get that started up, but they don't land the hook. They have to move at some point, so the point is open. They move on in, but the Legion, they're pretty well set here. Panker almost goes, but is able to get out just in time. He's able to heal up. The Legion can come back in, and play I'm lucky to get away with his life. Yeah, I like what the Grizzlies did there. They just waited it out. They didn't want to actually be on the point where it's just really open and easy uh, for Blase to come in and get some damage off. They don't want to tire before the point unlocks, and so now they are jumping in. Panker dropped down low. Spirit is hunting him down, but he's got the tire really out. Tired. Here comes Blase from the back. Blase connects, gets two early on, and that's the downside when you're running this tank heavy setup. You build the Junkrat speeder, and Blase just continues his rampage. Moving on forward, another two kills added to the pile. The explosive start coming in from Blase quickly turns the tides. Ultimately, though, Gladiators Legion, while they do win out the point, that's what Grizzlies were going for when they actually went into the mini health pack room. They didn't want Blase to have that rip tire before the point even unlocked. And so by playing in that position, they've already secured 32%. They've secured 32%, but what does it mean? You're running a quad tank situation here, and Legion now have ultimate to deal with it. Quad tank has a strong beginning, but a pretty rough finish, at least on the North American side. Panker already has his primal rage up. You see Zapri hook in, but you're gonna see gods, he's gonna get taken down, but look at how much of extended here. Meanwhile, Panker comes in and disrupts, making room for his team all the while. The Grizzlies, they invest the barrier, and Transcend can come out any point here from rule. Panker had to back out a bit, and here comes the Transcend, the counter engage, and the tire from the other side. Side, looking, weaving around, and gets Pog, and that still might be enough for the Legion. Yeah, especially with the Rez. Oh no, Pooks was not able to get it off, so Spirit is keeping them in them for now. Zapri now with the whole hog as he pushes away Panker. Panker low, he does have the orb on him. Will he be able to heal up enough? Self-destruct comes on out, but Zapri with the hook on to Corey. And so Grizzlies will be able to just muscle this one on out. Spirit still on the point as Rolf was able to pick up one staggered kill onto Graceful. Well, the problem with that staggered kill is that it's not really much of a stagger when Rolf ends up dying in turn. It's going to let the Grizzlies have more time here while the Legion has to wait for Rolf. Yeah, and in that last fight, I wanted to mention Panker had a great Primal Rage play. I mean, you saw Grizzlies go in, they used the Sound Barrier, they got the D-Mech, and then they went in uh, with the Death Blossom, but Panker in the Primal Rage was able to boop away Spirit. Spirit, once again, has another Death Blossom while he's getting focused out by two members. And Spirit is very safe right now. He's staying in the back, not really letting Corey get him in a situation where he can one-clip him, but you do have the Pulse Bomb up. You can't throw it on the Reaper Run. Oh, oh Spirit does not Wraith Walk in time. He falls early in the Legion. They're going to go all in on this, the Grizzlies. They've lost a huge source of power and trying to fight this back. The Graviton not able to do too much in the moment, but the follow through coming in from Zapri actually not too bad. Legion might have overextended just a bit here, and now Legion don't have the meaniness to actually get back on the point. Yeah, the Legion, they just had committed so many resources into shutting down Spirit. Oh, we saw first they sent in a 2v1 up against them, and then they went 3v1, able to convert upon that. But once you convert upon that, you still leave your supports vulnerable, especially to a Graviton now. And so it's coming Coming down to the final few percentage, 96%, Rip Tire, Dahoon is gone. Early Tire gets to Han, here come the Legion, right, off the pickoff. They they use the Transcendence here as well, but the problem is, it's not enough to save gods. Earth Shatter, in from Pog, can they get Panker? They do! The Transcendence does not keep the Legion alive where they needed it, it was used at the wrong time, and the Grizzlies able to turn it back around. The Legion losing this first round. Yeah, this is just really smart play coming out from the Grizzlies here. They understand the map, playing into this triple tank composition up against the Junkrat. They avoided a lot of the damage, and because, of course, uh, they had to worry continually, the Legions did, about Spirit's positioning. That allowed everyone else from the Grizzlies to try and take advantage of them. So the Grizzlies are going to swap things up here, but they're going to something that has historically not been super great for them, which is putting Zapri on the Sombra. You, you have to go back a little bit earlier in Contenders to sort of get a bigger sample size to it. And the goal here is that they want Zapri to hack tanks, they want Spirit to be able to protect the backline and also focus people down at the same time. It's going to be difficult, but we'll see if it works. Yeah, so now we are loading up onto Shrine here. 
And yeah, I am still not completely sold on the Zapri Sombra, but it is going to give them, of course, uncontested Mega Health Pack control there over by the Mega. Grizzlies moving on to that point. Legion on the opposite end. Neither team being too aggressive here just yet. But Legion just sort of have to measure this, right? How do you go in and get speared at the right time? Create a very easy target to dive on. The Grizzlies now making their move on to that point. This is going to force the Legion to move in sooner rather than later. They're also giving Spirit a lot of time. Now, getting progress on the point. Panker's going to go in. The focus fire on him early on. He can't go in aggressively. In fact, he has to leap back out. Meanwhile, that means God takes the brunt of it. The coordination a little bit off for the Legion as God's gets team next. But you saw Corey coming around the flank while this is going on. Spirit getting pressured. Panker moving back in. And the Legion slowly but surely starting to whittle down the Grizzlies. Yeah, they are whittling away. Two members set to the spawn are actually coming back now as the Legion are just muscling their way onto the point, just forcing them all off, all the spam, just too much for the Grizzlies to deal with. They weren't able to get anything off of that at all. So, point has unlocked, that's Legion taking it. And the key to that for me was Corey coming around the flank where Panker had the back out, but no one was on him. When the same tried to happen for Pog, Corey was there to punish him. And now the Legion, they not only have control of the point, they also have the rip tire in reserve. So we are seeing some swap offs coming out from the Grizzlies as Blam goes over to the Zenyatta and Spirit will be picking up, of course, the Genji. And so the Zenyatta, it's a great pick for them, right? Panker was almost down a few times, so the orb will be useful for them. Here's a rip tire coming in. It's into the back lines. It yeah, connects up. onto two. Two in the back for Blasé. They were close to bring it down, but not quite close enough. And that is just going to take the wind out of the Grizzly sails, as it were, back to their dens for another push. Yeah, and because the Grizzlies had just swapped off onto the Zenyatta and the Genji, using that tire to like disengage the fight and also get the staggers just really puts them even that much further behind. Uh, the Grizzlies weren't even able to poke because they were too afraid to poke out, uh, to peek out from the corner. Now Corey is coming in from the flank. Ori sneaking from the side, looking for anything. Just one good pick up stuff. Ooh, Zenyatta already on the case. And meanwhile, while Corey's wasting his time, you see the dive on the other end. The Legion down three members. Their supports are gone. Corey waiting a little bit too long, but he gets both supports on his own. Still, the damage has been done here. It's not going to be enough for Legion. As much as Corey on the late flank is actually doing a reasonable job, Panker's going to fall, and it's going to go the way of Grizzlies. Yeah, and so that was a great job of coming up from Blam. They're able to shut down Corey, even though Corey was going for the big plays. That allowed the rest of the Grizzlies just to engage upon them. And then we saw a lot of them try to focus down Blam once Blam was sort of out of position without the rest of his team. But still, coming into this next fight, Gladiators have a lot for the retake. Blase is pretty far from his rip tire, but, you know, it's Junkrat. He can build it up quickly. Barrier in from the Grizzlies. They take the initiative on this engage. They try to get Blase early on, but he's able to back out. Meanwhile, Rulf can transcend. He's super low, and he has to. Transcend just in time, and here we go the other way. The Legion diving right back into the Grizzlies. Blam, out of the fight immediately. Blase, going to take a breather up here and let it rip. Tire now on the way, looking for anything, and gets the Hun. That will be enough for the Legion here. They've struck pretty deeply at the Grizzlies. They haven't lost anyone return, and a nice back and forth from Rulf to set that up. Yeah, and so a lot of ultimates used by both sides. Rolf and Pooks using both their transcendents along with the Valkyrie. And so in this final fight, Spirit, unfortunately, he tried to go for a blade. So now he's reset once again. He's not going to have that big finishing blow. But they're going to have the EMP along with the transcendents very shortly. Blam just needs to hit a few more orbs to just heal uh, Dahun up just a little bit. There we go into the back. EMP comes oh, out. Save! But the defense matrix is there to keep him alive. God's coming in off the EMP. Didn't get hit by the EMP himself. Blocks Rolf from certain death. That was an incredible play coming out by Gods, and the Legion are going to hold on. We're likely going to a round three at this time here, just to be sure. Overtime ticks down, and wow! That was a huge save from Gods in the boat, especially because he wasn't in that EMP. Yep, Gods was in a great place. Uh, at least Pooks would have been there uh, to keep him pocketed, so it was very close, but yeah, definitely the awareness of Gods to come back with that defense matrix and not getting caught out by that EMP. That was a great position for him. So now we're going on to the third map here. It is going to be Sanctum. And so we'll see. Panker, he hasn't been as effective of a tank quite yet. And now we're going over to Orisa, where it's not definitely his strong suit, but we have seen some good play out of him. Well, one thing I noticed about the Legion here is that you s I feel like Gods and Panker are a little bit less in sync. I mean, I know there were rumors about players maybe uh, getting OWL Trouts or other something along those lines. But either way, it, we've seen Gods go down early and Panker go down early way more often than normal. Part of it might be focused fire by the Grizzlies, but it's all going to be decided here in the Sanctum is Corey plays the smug French woman. 
Yeah, so we have Grizzlies going for the dive, while the Legion are just going to go for the Junkrat Widowmaker that we've seen here in Contenders pretty often. But Corey, oh, he's getting a taste of his own medicine as Zapri spots him out, takes him out. That's a two for one. It's just actually Graceful's mech that gets gone. Grizzlies, a much better flanking engage early on, and it hasn't stopped yet. Zapri still bloodthirsty, takes down the tank line for good measure. It's going to be an early, fast quick take here for the Grizzlies as the Legion. Well, the Widowmaker, it's done. Yep, already the swaps are coming out. Legion, they're just going to go for the dive. Blase will stick to the Junkrat, though, because Junkrat is still really strong, especially when teams are fighting on the points. You're just able to shell them from a distance from the high ground on the right-hand side. So now Legion, they're making their approach on in as Zapri, he's got the Pulse Bomb ready. They're all grouped up. Those are some juicy targets. Zapri, he's going to go for a moment. He has three blanks up, double blank stick, goodbye. Rulf out of the fight very early. Now, as this is going on, Rulf's gonna get brought back up. Graceful overdove a little bit, so the Legion actually is not that damaged in the moment. They've gotten a good sense of momentum here. They can move forward. Here comes the Blade from Spirit. Can it actually equalize? Goes in deep and is gonna get taken down. Blase, the only casualty. But with God's getting demeched, now it gets a little bit more back and forth. Back and forth is good for the Grizzlies here as Rulf uses the Transcend. It's a little bit weird to use it here because Grizzlies can still delay, still get more people on the point. And even if it gets dicey, Blam can transcend here in time in all likelihood to keep things up. You look at Blam right now. He has the transcend up. Graceful going to fall on the point, And I don't think the Grizzlies are going to go into this as hard. I think they're actually going to back out. Yeah, they just use the tank ultimate. They use uh, the primal rage to try and delay this as long as possible. Blam, just giving his life away. They don't need to commit the ultimates into it. They've already secured 64%. So just before, and they had gotten some good ones out, especially Rolf's Transcendence. Now, he is back up to 43%, but once they use that Transcendence to convert and get the point, really, Grizzlies didn't need to use anything else into that fight now. So Legion, right now on the outside, they're holding the high ground here. They're trying to keep track of all the members of the Grizzlies, and Zapri is already forced away, was able to pick up the Mega Health Pack, but now he knows that they do have the hunt on for him as Corey's trying to chase him down. False, False Bomb gets eaten. The False Bomb out does not get what he's looking for. Meanwhile, Zapri on the opposite side gets pooks. Zapri again gets both supports. A terror to the back line and Panker left all alone. He's going to Primal Rage here, but it's a little bit questionable. You've lost both supports. You can't realistically stay around for too long, but I guess the goal here is oh. get as much of the point as you can as he gets Spirit. And even though the Grizzlies are winning the rest of the fight, they do buy a little bit of extra time. Yeah, so Panker will fall ultimately, and now it is going to be the Grizzlies taking control over the point. 65% ticking up. Now it's still interesting that Rolf and Pooks, the support line for Gladiator's Legion, they're going to continue to run this Mercy. While Grizzlies, they have to hunt, of course, on that um, on that Lucio. So the, there's a bit more appeal, as you see, when the dive comes out onto Legion, they don't have much but relying upon their support ultimates. This is a really nice opportunity for Spirit right now. He doesn't realize he has his window in all likelihood, but Rulf does have Transcend yet. Unfortunately, the window's closing. 95%, 96. He still can't Transcend, but he gets it right in the middle of the fight. Spirit, a second or two too late. As a result, most of his blade is nullified. Here comes Blase's tire. Off the other side, takes down two. Blase off the flanking tire, breaks it wide open. And oh my goodness, the Spirit was just a second or two earlier there. That could have been a different fight. Yeah, and so now it's 99% for the Grizzlies. Remember, it is knotted up one to one. This is map point. Gladiators Legion need to hold on for another one, maybe two fights here up against the Grizzlies to secure this. Coming to this next fight, we will have the Transcendence for the Grizzlies. Possibly, Graceful will get that self-destruct up, but it's the Legion who have a real big power advantage. They've got, of course, Corey's Bomb, who's been playing stellarly so far on this map, along with Pooks, who's got the Valkyrie out. Panko oh, there it is, delay. it sticks! Pulse Bomb comes out, forcing out Blam's Transcendence. And it got Pog! The Transcendence wasn't enough to heal him up in the moment. Pog wasn't quite in it. The Grizzly, or the Legion, gets two kills off of it. But no, Wolf and Pink are down themselves. But it's Corey, unchecked unchained in the back, gets Blam, is isolating Lucio out of the fight. He's certainly not healing anyone other than himself right now. And hey, credit where credit is due. That was a long fight versus Corey for Tahan, but the rest of his team in trouble. Un oh, they get on the point of side. Fleegion, you gotta touch it. You lost control in the middle of it. They weren't able to leap back on. So that time that, Pata that
that to Hun Brock oh. was really, really a big deal. Legion now in the hot seat as respawns come in from the Grizzlies. Yeah, Panker though, Primal Rage ran out and now he has fallen here overtime, still ticking away. Pulse Bomb got dodged out by that, but it's Blase able to just come in with that spam, with the shelling as Corey is hunting down his counterpart right now. All the orbs everywhere, but will he be able to get it? No, Spirit is there. He's able to get the Swift Strike. And it's like Zephyr. Zephyr still is alive. He's healing back up. Here comes Spirit, blade out, looking. Slices through Blase. Dying to the back. Is he going to get the twofer? He does. Pooks out of it. 20 HP for Spirit and a prayer. And yet, still alive. He's going to get healed back up. The flank is for the Grizzlies living. Even the cards are against them. And the Grizzlies so close to taking this first map. They do. And the dream is still alive. So good for the Grizzlies. They, uh, there is a dire necessity for them to keep up this kind of a pace. Where were you guys expecting to see some weakness where you didn't? Well, in terms of weakness where we did it, I would say that I wasn't expected to come out the Sobra again on the second stage, whereas it's like, why would you put Zapper in anything else other than Tracer? Especially with how he was playing on the third stage. If you're not going to run something more gimmickly like quad tank, please keep this man on Tracer. He's very, very good at it. Yeah, playing against that Junkrat on the second stage on uh, Shrine there did not work out for them because they were playing up against the Junkrat um, while they were trying to run the McCree, but the sidelines were being used uh, pretty stellarly by the side of the Gladiator's Legion where they weren't, you know, leaving themselves very vulnerable to it. And because I don't believe that they were running the Zenyatta early on, we were having moments where Panker was just surviving, where if they had an Orb of Discord on him, he should have been gone. He should have been eliminated and they were able, they would have been able to push forward. But because they didn't have that early start like they did on both other uh, of the two points that we played on, they ultimately lost out on that. But I am impressed by Gressful and Pog. They are really um, holding their own right now, especially up against a duo like Panker and Gods. Yeah, we have some great replay here. This is Pog. This is on Reinhardt when we were uh, seeing that quad tank kind of making an appearance. Or I guess we were only in triple tank right here. Yeah. It was a triple tank, and you know, they played this very smart. It was very uh, measured approach coming out from the Grizzlies from the onset, right? Um, before the point even unlocked, they noticed that there was a Junkrat. They decided to go into the mini health pack room out by the ledge so that they weren't taking the damage. He wouldn't have the rip tire. Generally, a Junkrat has a rip tire by the time the point unlocks. He had almost 22% only, and that's just the passive at, um, ultimate build at that point. And one thing that was very interesting, I mean, in terms of the Junkrat play, it did catch him off guard in the beginning, and then towards the end, they were able to play around it. One thing that was a little bit uncharacteristic is that you think back to the last time we saw Gladiators play, Gods was having the match of his life, not only staying alive for the most part, but getting pickoffs here, there, and everywhere. Panker and Gods were a solid unit. Here, it felt like you'd see one of the two of them get picked off early, and sometimes it was because one of them overextended. Yeah. Other t and certainly, I think the Grizzlies were focused on them hard, but it wasn't quite the top-class tank duo that we've come to expect from the Legion, at least in the very first map. Yeah, I mean, triple tank, right? If you're playing a D.Va up against triple tank, it's very difficult to try and focus anyone down. Usually, um, as a D.Va, you are able to maybe one-shot a uh, Winston if he has an orb on him. Uh, but in, in this particular case, Gods didn't have that same kind of freedom, right? He had to play a bit more passive, and especially once we went over to Sanctum, because that they weren't running a Lucio, they didn't have their own peels, they had to rely upon Gods being very defensive instead of trying to go aggressive with it. All right, well, let's take a little bit more time with this replay now. This is Zafri on Tracer, where we all agree Zafri belongs. Uh, just, yeah, absolutely being the reason why they kept flipping that point. Well, Zafri just had moments where it wasn't even just that point there. It's also the idea that a team would be in a rough situation where it's like, okay, normally this is going to be a clean take, and then a Tracer could get a kill or two in the moment and actually turn would be a clean take into something more prolonged, something where suddenly you have the possibility of the rest of your team coming back in and delaying. And it's that power of Tracer to turn cleanly one fights into very messy, longer-term engagements is where a Tracer player can shine, and Zapri was able to do that multiple times over the course of the series. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and roll into game here, and uh, we are going to be heading... Oh, no, sorry, just kidding. We're going into map selection, and it's Hollywood. Uh, we have seen so much just kind of ingenuity in Hollywood, but specifically between Gods and Panker, this always kind of seems like their playground when they take it here. Um, what do you guys expect, or do you just expect to see more of the same? 
Well, the Legion's very good at their early attacks on Cafe. I do think this is a little bit risky, the go-to, especially when they have had trouble dealing with strong flanking DPS because Hollywood second is not always a tank playground. But Cafe, if they feel strong, getting a quick start and then carrying the momentum into second, it would make sense as to why Legion would bring this here. Yeah, I feel maybe there's something on point A that they're trying to uh, work with here. Grizzlies, they can, of course, run the triple tank. We already saw that on Village on Nepal. This is a map on point A where you can run that. Transitioning it into point B is where a lot of teams run into difficulty so maybe gladiators have a plan for point a defense all righty well let's go ahead and get into game now we're going to see if the grizzlies can keep up this pressure against the legion right now leading one zero well lucio might be out of concert in Nambani, but apparently he generally calls hollywood his home that's what happens you get big you stay in hollywood at least in the overwatch verse and also to a degree in the real verse i think yeah in the real verse where overwatch has everyone's out here in north hollywood <laughs> slash Burbank. now uh, we have just made our home here at his home base so now it is going to be the gladiators legion starting off on the offensive they're going to have blase back on that junk rat here as corey will pick up that diva excuse me the uh, Tracer once again. It's a full out dive defense coming up from the Grizzlies, though. It is a little bit weird to see Blase constantly in the junk right here. Not that he's uh, bad at it by any means, but I would expect to see Genji at some point here, but for now, he's staying on the junk ride, and you see the Legion rotating around, right? They're waiting for the ghost signal to go, yeah, actually, we're gonna dive in the cafe. They're gonna give Blase time to come up here on the top, and now you look at the rest of the Legion, right? They're waiting for the chance to dive in. Panker under fire early on, able to back out, so that could've been an easy team fight win for the Grizzlies. They had good focus fire on the Panker, but now Spirit, mixed cues, super low early on, and the Legion start moving the other way, getting their way in, and Zapri gets caught! Blase gets him, two first pickoffs to the Legion, and now they the tools they need to take first. Yeah, and then we saw right there what a D.Va can do to a Winston. The micro missiles just combined with all the damage boosting, it melts him completely. And so now Gladiators Legion are working better to form now. So Grizzlies, it looks like they are just gonna go ahead and give this position up as we already have Corey pushing forward with this Tracer. He's got the Pulse Bomb in a few more seconds here. They've gotta be careful when they group up. Legion. They get the first attack successfully as they're looking for it, but Blase taken down from range. Headshot Jerkins coming in from Spirit. Oh. That leads him win, oh. but Pog a little bit too deep. Corey's gonna punish on the side, and now you've lost both your tanks. Spirit goes, okay, we're gonna try and make this work. Dives in deep, gets Rufe with the blade, and the blade will buy the defense a little bit of time here. The problem is, is that you are right in their spawn. They're gonna be coming back up. I don't know if you're getting enough value from this blade in the long run as the Legion now get to easily reset up. You didn't trade the blade for a support alt, and in fact, this could make the next fight very rough for the Grizzlies. Yeah, I mean, Rolf was so close to it, so he might have used it, but ultimately, I think you just hold on to it if you even have it as the Legion. So we do have some trades going back and forth right now between two teams. That means the payload gets to push forward as Pooks, he gets the resurrection on the Blase. So here's the downside for the Grizzlies that you used the blade in the last fight to stagger a little bit spawn. Now for the next major team fight, you're working at a bit of a disadvantage. You do have the Transcendence to come in and buy time, but I think we really want is Zapri to get some pickoffs with Widow. Meanwhile, Panker, a little bit deep. Blase needs to get something with this tire. Still 90 HP, still rolling around two seconds. One second, finds two in the cubby hole, and this is gonna be enough for the Legion to start moving forward, so long as they don't let Zapri go crazy. Yeah, Zapri just uncontested right now. They got the D-Mech on to Gods, and he's dropped down low. They need to buy time for him to try and get his mech back or just go ahead and reset at this point. Legion Blase even caught out. He has to be careful here. But right now, I like this position coming out from Zapri. He's almost got, of course, the recon visor up. Pulse Bomb doesn't connect by Corey here, but Zapri has to fall back. Panker, meanwhile, Primal Rage in process. Used it to chase down Spirit. Zapri, oh, that is a bad time to get into a bar fight with a gorilla just running out the other end. Panker not quite able to finish his plate. Zapri gonna get away. <laughs> or is he? Panker just <laughs> relentlessly chasing Zapri down. Well, it's like every turn, uh, like he, Every corner he turns, there's someone there. Tracer, right, as soon as he's out the door, now he's on the high ground. He's already got the headshot onto Pooks as Spirit tries to go in for that blade, but he does get the transcendence out from Rolf here. So now, no more support ultimates online as they're on the hunt Ooh. for Rolf, but Rolf, he's not a force to be reckoned with. But we didn't see, it swapped right before, but we didn't see his Rolf just unloaded with a secondary fire right into Spirit's guts. That was brutal. The thing to note here, though, is that even though the Legion's been kind of trading out more positively here, the Grizzlies have been streaming on, they've been contesting, the Legion haven't had a huge focus on the payload, so this has been a pretty good defense for the Grizzlies, all things considered. Yeah, it's been a slow grind coming out from the Legion trying to push this payload forward. Now, Corey, he does have to be careful. Zapra can still one-shot him. 
That orb, it doesn't do damage reduction. It only heals now. Zapper getting dove upon. He's down to about 10 HP, and Corey will finish him off. Gods with the two mats up. Whoa! Graceful! Answers right back, equalizing it himself. Graceful, able to bring that fight back from the brink. That was looking really good because of Corey's pressure on the supports. But hey, who needs supports when you blow up most of the other team? That said, the Legion still have enough to keep pressure on the point, and Corey is fighting this back tooth and nail. It gets a few shockwaves to the face at the very end there, but the payload now about maybe one team fight away from Legion. Only two minutes left, though. Yeah, the trades ultimately do favor out Grizzlies at this point, especially if it goes even because of the respawn distances. Blam! With a great spam, with that measured angle on the Zenyatta, able to take out God, so that's going to stagger them even longer. Legion now down to a minute and 40 seconds. And we see sort of the Legion getting gummed up here, where they've been under constant distractions from the Grizzlies through and through, and they're stuck waiting for their final two attacks. They don't have too much to go in, says is Corey, already poking around the outskirts, looking for an area to drop the pulse bomb, but the Legion are taking a lot of time for this attack. Yeah, they are on the high ground. They're going to try and force Spirit back here as Corey is looking for anybody at this point. Trying to spot out Zapri, but there's a pulse bomb. Corey connects Pag down once again. Spirit, his blade is just shut down, and he's booped away and forced out of position. Spirit's blade's not getting a whole lot in this game here so far. The Legion, they get enough to start pushing forward. It's not enough to get the defense fully out of their face right now, where you still see the delay coming in. Now Panker is going to be taking things into his own hands. Primal Rage up, and this is where he acts as a bouncer, right? You wait for the Grizzlies to come in, you use the Primal Rage, and you keep them out. And Dahan walks in face first to a Genji. Rough times, Panker going wild into the back. And Pose able to get out. He was super low. Now he gets healed up. He can use the blade if it's necessary here. But with every kill going Legion's way, they shouldn't need the blade here. They do get it through second. Yeah, so the Grizzlies, they only commit, of course, the Primal Rage into that, try and stall it as much as possible. We got some great staggered kills. Oh, Blam, Hag, and uh, Hun's caught out there. And so now that is going to allow the Legion to push this payload ever forward. As Grizzlies, they have to reset. Honestly, though, with only a minute 45 left on the clock for Legion, the Grizzlies can still hold here on third. The Grizzlies only need to stop the Legion maybe once to twice here. Depends on how far they go. Now, they're going to be taking this high ground dive over the top, and Corey falls immediately. He was on the flank. This puts way more pressure on Blasse. Laid up. Two members of the team down to you. Blade here, the equalizer, and you go for the reset. You don't have much time in either case, and Blasse has found himself so far out of the fight that it's not really a great time to Blade. In fact, the Legion, they have to fully reset. Yeah, there's some great coordination coming out on the Grizzly side uh, between Blam and Zapri. Zapri was having a difficult time earlier before. He didn't have the same kind of um, orb support that Corey was getting that we saw on Nepal, but now Zapri is able to follow up on a lot of these uh, Discord orbs and Discord targets, but Zapri gets spotted out by Corey. Sound barrier out. Spirit once again with another blade that gets booped away. Well, it gets booped away. Sound barrier going to ruin most of his day. He gets a barrier of his own, but it's late. Rulf going to move in with the Transcendence. Legion all in on this fight. The self-destruct only gets pooped to the back as Blase gets to work. The blade taking down two on the other side. Rulf with the Zenyatta versus Zenyatta attack, and the Legion still in this fight. 39 seconds left to go. Legion will hold it out, but the Grizzlies have one more opportunity to come together. It's full six man for the stop onto this payload, but they have to work against God's self destruct along with Panker's Primal Rage. They have not much at all in their bank as Grizzlies. They're only relying upon Pag with the Primal Rage just to try and disengage from some of these fights, some of these engagements. Well, they also have Zapri, who's just good at one flipping people in general. Panker going in deep. Primal Rage is with 100 HP left. Good control on his part. Making room. Godzo gonna get demecked here. Has to self destruct just to get back in. Are they gonna get him before he remecks? No, he does remex. Pog out of the fight. Corey coming around the other side. A support in his view. Looking for Blam and Lucio at the same time. Not going to be able to get it, but he's keeping the supports a bit distracted while this goes on. The rest of the Legion keeping control on the payload. And Gods, for now, going to get healed up. Control still had by the Gladiators. Now you look to Spirit here. Spirit has a blade on a woman of prayer, but it's going to be running directly into the Transcendence. There's the blade, Transcendence, and Spirit doesn't get a chance to play it. He has to back out. The Legion's super close, and Spirit gets bopped at the very end. Overtime in progress, and it's looking like the Legion will get this through in overtime. You have self-destruct coming out this time from Graceful, but everyone will be able to make it back onto the point. Graceful not even able to get back into his mech. It was just overtime ticking away. And so the Legion will finish out this map, and it's going to be the Grizzlies' turn to attack next. 
Ultimately, I would like to say right now, they are doing such a great job on the Legion's part of shutting down Spirit all map long. Every time he goes in for a blade, he has been shut down. Either Primal Rage is there to boop him away, or the Diva uses the rockets to make sure that he's out of position. Uh, they've been doing a great job of making sure that they're not falling to these blades. Well, and that's a problem for the Grizzlies, right? Where you think back to where they upset XL2, you had Spirit acting far out of his comfort zone and doing quite well where he was able to get good value off almost every blade. Today has been the opposite. And sure, there's credit due to the Legion, but there's also a degree of responsibility in the Genji to just be able to sift through the chaos and find the right opportunity in which to drop a blade. Oh uh, yeah, I would agree with you there. Now, Spirit, we'll see. He's sticking to the Genji, and why not? Because this is, of course, Hollywood Point A. Like most maps, lend itself well to this full-on dive. The Legion, though, they're going to go for something a bit more stationary as, as we have Pinker once again on the Teresa. So, Blase should be able to just stand behind that shield and start shelling out the Grizzlies, and Grizzlies have to be careful on their dive. Of course, when you're trying to dive into a Junkrat, you have to be worried about something like the Trap. That Steel Trap can just put a complete halt to your your dive and this also makes a lot more sense when you're riding the junk rat on the defense and look we'll say has been fairly focused on the junk in the series and why not i think junk rat's been a little bit underplayed towards uh the last few weeks of contenders here so it's good to see it back in play but yeah this is this is a very tank heavy engage setup here where the grizzlies can't really rely just on zapri unless he plays completely out of its mind it is gonna require a nice engage from peg and graceful here to actually make this happen so interesting positioning coming out from blase's first steel trap and concussive mine it's actually covering the right hand side flank so as they try to make their way through security into the right side hallway someone's gonna get caught out it might be zapri i think they were expecting a triple tank quad tank setup coming out from the grizzlies as they try to take control over that there we do have Pag jumping in, he's already half HP, and God's gonna peel for him. Roll, or Zapri got Blase really early on in the fight, so if the Grizzlies can get just one more, if Zapri can still play out of his mind, they can make this work. Unfortunately, the rest of the Legion was able to deal with the Grizzlies dive really well. Zapri's going to fall, and this will give Blase time to get back to fight. What it does mean, though, is because he died earlier in the fight, and you know he has to get Rez back up, it means that he does not have a tire up and ready. Yeah, so it, it's okay. There's plenty of ways that they, they that they can buy time for Blase um, right now, though. As we go into this next fight, still not much online, but Corey, he's getting close to his bomb. He's already at 70%, 83 now, as there it is. Blase on the Junkrat. He's already took them down, Ooh. but Zapri gets the 1v1 against Corey, who even had the orb on him. Yeah, he had an orb, and oh my goodness, Zapri showing that he can lay on the damage here. Doesn't quite matter. Moving on in, Pulse Bomb up. Connects right into the back, gets Blase. Threat after threat being neutralized. Now, it was in such a position that Blase could get res back up, but Zapri has put the Grizzlies on the right foot here. They have dominance here on the point. It's up to the Grizzlies to get out of the cafe to still challenge us. Corey coming back in. Spirit over dives. That opens the door. The Legion coming back in. Corey gets Blam off the flank. Still has his Pulse Bomb. Pulse Bomb out. Does not quite get what he's looking for, but we'll say exploding over the top. Needs a little bit more. Finds a baby diva trying to get a latte in the back, and it's not going to be enough as the Legion do hold. Yeah, that's fine for the Grizzlies. Even though they lose this push, they at least got both support ultimates out from it. And so now a spirit coming into this next fight. This is the window he's looking for when he goes in for the blade, where Rolf doesn't have a transcendence and Pook, uh, Pooks can't just use his moon maneuverability or the Valkyrie to keep people topped off. But here we go. Blase once again trying to shut down a push. And and the good part here for Spirit is that Blase doesn't really try and counter-engage with Tyre. He uses it early on for the stagger, and he gets Spirit. But the upside is that Spirit did have a blade out, so to a degree, that is good for Spirit because now he doesn't have to worry about blading and getting a tire in his face. And here's a smart part coming out from Grizzlies. This is where they are, they are being a lot more measured. They understand that they have almost all their ultimates, so they don't need a poke. And because they're not poking, Rolf and Pooks, they're not building up any ultimate at this point. They've been just passively building it up, and here we go, Spirit coming in. He's getting ready for the Blade. Blade has pulled out, and now he's in over the top, but Graceful's already started it off. And oh. he's gone. Does not quite get what he's looking for. In fact, Blase able to bring this back the other way, despite a nice opening from Graceful. Pog with the Primal Rage, shut right down by Gods. The tank play of Gods and Panker, more in sync here on point A. The Grizzlies had an excellent opening, and yet Panker and Gods starting to bring it back, yet. Corey down, and we have DPS Diva, Baby Diva, doing work as Graceful continues to play out of his mind here in the cafe. This payload is going to start moving forward. All right, now Pooks does swap off onto Lucio, doesn't feel 
like playing that Mercy anymore as Zapri's on the hunt, but oh, you gotta be careful. Blase is right there. Spirit and Zapri both out of this. Now, even with Junkrat being better in recent times, it's not the greatest Stanley Junkrat here in the second. So what's probably gonna happen is, Blase is gonna use a tire, and if he doesn't get a whole bunch of extra ult charge in the ensuing fight, he's gonna swap. Yep. But we'll see. I mean, it can be very difficult to try and dislodge a junk from the high ground. Here we go, another tire. It's just trying to buy time. His graceful. <laughs> he's still oh, alive. Okay, he's now still, he's he survives. He is able to actually take out Blase. But there we go. Rolf will clean him up. This is probably gonna be a swap now. You see Blase still in the junk rat. Probably gonna be a Genshi moving in. There you go. Blase done with the rat. Now a ninja. And hey, what a tire to go out. Yeah. Zapri himself has swapped off onto the Widowmaker, has been doing some good damage. Panker uh, just goes far in, and that it is just going to be a full reset coming out from the Legion here. They want to come out as a full six man, it looks like, as Corey himself has now swapped off onto the Widowmaker to try and challenge Zapri. Zapri, plenty of room to work with here. The Legion in full retreat, and remember, for the Grizzlies, they have to make this a 4 0, so this is a map they must win. Yeah, the Grizzlies definitely need this win now. Spirit. He's on the lurk. He's got the pulse bomb, but he's waiting for them to be a bit more grouped Ooh, up. But okay. while he's waiting, Corey takes the 1v1 against <laughs> Zapri and Rolf himself. Spirit, along with Zapri, has been having like a difficult time up against Rolf so far. Well, difficult time. I mean, yeah, you go in from the side and just get hit in the gut with orbs. Yeah, it's a difficult time. My goodness, the Legion off those picks buy themselves so much time here. Yep. And that is completely necessary as Pokes has uh, been building his Lucy ultimate up, making that swap off. Now he's already at 86%. And so even though he had done a fresh swap, now he's almost got his sound barrier. Corey getting challenged on the high ground. He has to be careful. He's at 80 HP, will get the orb. So now he can go for a peek again. Barrier coming in from the Grizzlies, trying to make this one through. Panker down really early. They're able to get him in the beginning of the fight. Corey, gonna try and neutralize. Widow versus Widow in the back. Meanwhile, the Legion barrier on their own with only five people and they return the favor. Both Winston's out of the fight. Pog, a little bit too deep. Transcends in for the Grizzlies, but they're not able to capitalize on it whatsoever. Meanwhile, the Legion, not only will they deem that graceful, they're about to have a blade. They might not need to use it here, though, as the, every other kill goes their way. And the true differ differentiating factor there, when you transcend in, you gotta get something out of it if you're the Grizzlies. Yeah, the Grizzlies actually com um, committed a lot of ultimates into that. Most notably, I would say, would be actually Graceful Self-Destruct, where they already had the man advantage. Panker was gone. A Diva has tons of damage with the Micro Missiles. She didn't have to try and go for a Hail Mary play with that Self-Destruct. Instead, of just should have just gone in with the mech and tried to get the frags that way. Here comes the blade. Boisse gets Blam immediately and is looking for four. I guess he wins and just leap away. But hey, you got Blam early on. It buys time for your team. You don't need to do anything crazy. It's good for him to just back out and wait. And now, oh, they were trying to ninja that. They almost got it, but Pinkard, the, he did have to actually use his Primal Rage just to get back to the point uh, quicker here. It's down to the final 10 seconds for the Grizzlies. And they are almost out of everything in their uh, bank. They don't have any ultimates up. Zapri might get the Recon Visor, but that's not what you want to finish out a fight. They have to get the payload now. Spirit again, just trying to do it on his lonesome, pushing the payload in the moment. Zapri though, already done. Remember, the Grizzlies have to follow the Legion here or their playoff hopes are over. Spirit out of the fight. The Legion no, re-solidifying, and oh no, Winston not able to get back on there in time. And as a result, the Legion take the map and move the Grizzlies out of playoff contention. So technically, the Grizzlies could still get into playoffs, but it would rely on XL2 and Mayhem both losing 0-4. I believe that may be accurate. The problem here with this is that, as you mentioned, they would both would have to go 0-4. Yep. And then you also have the scenario where they still have to win the rest of the maps out. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So uh, this is, you know, no, I'm not going to say all hope is lost. I'm just saying it's going to be a heck of a lot harder road with that particular map loss. Um, we saw Corey's Widowmaker go unchecked, and that didn't really work out for last night's leftovers last week. And it also didn't seem to work out for Grizzlies this week. Do you think it's a matter of people just losing track of him? I mean, I think right now it's just Corey versus Zapri, right? It's been going back and forth, uh, the Tracer battles and the Widow battles, but it is uh, Corey slightly just tipping the scales in his favor. Um, I, I, I just feel like Zapri has, has too much on his plate, right? Spirit hasn't been able to make as many plays as on the opposite end Blase has. And so that allows Corey a lot more freedom than Zapri has. Also, the other thing, too, is that Spirit's been trying to just dive in and be a hero throughout most of this, and it's just sort of like, 
almost every blade was, well, mm -hmm. you got an alt out of it, but there's also a degree where it's like, yes, getting it all out is a fine trade, but there are moments where you need to get a little bit more from that. Find an area where you could get on someone who's not within the alt, which Spirit was able to do in their upset over XL2. I remember he had a particularly great moment where, okay, you have a transcend on low ground, find the people on high ground, get a kill after that. And you don't have to do that every time, but you gotta do it some of the time as Spirit was coming up with mostly nothing in most of this. Yeah, we have some playback now of a, he, this guy has just been consistent on this Junkrat. Here's Blase. Uh, we were over comms. We were trying to figure out just how many tires and how many kills he was getting. We lost track. It was a lot. Yeah, you never try to keep a uh, was, track of a junk yeah, that's tires at this point. Impossible. I mean, we need we need to bring in you know Captain Planet at that point to keep track for us. <laughs> so we need someone dedicated to do that just to try and keep uh, keep track of the rat. And you know Blase, he's been having a great game. And like I said, when you go uh, when you when Spirit and Zap or excuse me when Spirit and Corey are going so head to head that the secondary DPS makes a huge difference. And Blase did make a much more uh, had a bigger impact than Spirit did here on Hollywood. All right, well, we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to jump right back into the action between Gladiator's Legion and the Grizzlies, so stay tuned. <laughs> 